All right then. Namaste everyone. A very, very happy Friday morning to you all. Um, thank you for being such an integral part of this week, this mentabulous week and the parent talks that we've planned and arranged for you. We finally come to the climax in every way of this engagement. We all want what is perfect, a perfect world, perfect us, perfect families, perfect children. We want to be perfect parents too. And we know that life is quite that way. And verily, if it were <coughs> such, things would be so linear, so bland and so boring. However, when things aren't quite as perfect as we'd, as we'd like them to be, it sort of impacts us in some ways, many ways. To help us understand perfection, perils and pitfalls, we have the perfect candidate here. Thank you very, very, very much, Dr. Avinash D'Souza for making time to be with us today. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, just to let you know, he is among the biggest names in the field of mental health that you can have. Uh, I had asked him to share a bio and he gave me two words. <laughs> so I'm going to try and piece together and put together as much as I can to let you know a little bit about him. Dr. D'Souza is a consultant psychiatrist and the founder trustee of the D'Souza Foundation in Mumbai. The D'Souza Foundation, apart from his own work, the D'Souza Foundation does some stellar work uh, in the field of mental health and trying to bring about greater awareness, sensitization and empowerment. And they do this across the board, whether it is to do with children, to do with adolescents and teens, to do with parents, to do with corporates and even the elderly. Uh, no matter how much of an introduction I give, it isn't justice enough. And I know you're here only to hear from him. So I'm not going to hog the limelight. I'm going to share. I'm going to hand over to him just to let you know that this is perhaps the best forum for us to talk about, discuss and have as many doubts as we can clarified. So please do share your questions in the comments and we will have Dr. D'Souza take them for us towards the end of the session. Over to you, sir. Yeah. Well, uh, good morning, everyone, and uh, it's an honor. Pleasure Recording to be in here. progress. Um, well, the topic <laughs> is very important, and I, at the outset, also want to tell you that I'm not only here as a psychiatrist, I have a kid who's in the ninth standard, so I totally understand, you know, what parenting is. And uh, uh, because I remember whenever uh, I used to take lectures on parenting some years back, I used to always tell people he's in the lower classes. Now he's in the higher classes. So, I mean, I just always say that. So it, I give you both perspectives, that of a mental health professional and also that of a parent. Now, the thing is that uh, we all want things to be perfect and nice for our children. We want them to be perfect in all that they do. Well, you have some children who are a little obsessive, particular. They want that, you know, they... Everything has to be clean and nice and good. And, and there are some who are, of course, the total opposite. And I very often get parents who meet me, uh, even when I say go to pick up my son from school, or they meet me here and there, or some who come to my clinic. They very often tell me, you know, I am not able to inculcate discipline in my child. And they'll say that, you know, his room is messy. He'll come back from school. He'll throw his bag his shoes are in one place and, you know, then I have to run after him, he come and have lunch, come and have lunch. And then it takes half an hour to make him to come and have lunch. Then in the middle of lunch, he'll suddenly get up because some message comes on the iPad. And so, you know, there's no discipline in his life. And I always say that you will never get discipline in, in teenagers because they're uh, the most cardinal fact is that their brain is in a stage of development. So, you know, it's not going to be like yours and mine. If we look back and think of how we were at 15, 16, 17, 18, and maybe even earlier, we were also like that. But yes, we were maybe in a slightly slower paced world than we are today. Today, the world is far more fast paced. But we were also like that. We were also pretty laid back. We were also not so worried. Oh, it's just that we were probably not as verbal as children today are. We were not as, we are not as assertive as children today are. There's a very thin line between being assertive and aggressive. But, you know, so those things are there. And today's children are very vocal about it. I mean, if we didn't like something that our mom and dad told us, you know, we would just keep quiet and, you know, swallow it and go away. But 
to these children are very clear they'll tell you you know mom you're being a hypocrite mom you're being this dad you're being this so you will you know hear those kinds of words which we also at some point of time probably wanted to tell our parents but we never could you know so uh, even now we can't so it's you know that kind of a thing so because that was the upbringing today the upbringing is different now when it comes to perfection i remember i always tell parents you know today we're in a world where marks so predominantly matter and you know and the icsc board the c i mean people are getting i think 95 98 99% <laughs> which uh, 100% in some subjects i mean i think uh, we never had those kind of marks ever i mean so i remember my son asking me how much did i score in my 10th and i told him i got 81% and he was laughing that how did i ever make it you know in life i said no at that time everything was fine with 81% you would get a good college in the 12th with 90% i could join medicine there was never a problem but today you know we're in a different world um, so the the i remember it starts when you know we tell the child from day one you know you have to do well you have to score you have to get this right and it starts on our own because it's our own insecurities you know there are there are three types of parents i always say one who probably wanted to do something in their own life it's not that they failed it's just that the time wasn't right they couldn't do it the marks didn't come whatever it's not their fault they're doing very well today but they still yearn that probably they can see their children do what they couldn't do so that is one two you have a group of parents who feel that their child is the best and everyone feels that their child is the best and they want their child to perform but we have to always be very cognizant of the capacity of our child we have to understand whether he's capable of doing and getting what we expect him to do or are we sort of putting a big load on his head back mind while doing that so that's very important and third we have a group of parents who've been achievers themselves and they want their children to equally be you know achieving so when your child comes home and you know he comes with his chemistry test paper and tells you that i've got 18 out of 20 and i missed two questions the first question we ask him is did anyone get full you know invariably then the second question we ask him is that uh, what were the marks of his five or six friends you know who were close to him and then we ask him how many people got 19 but we rarely appreciate the fact that he got 18 so i've had a kid who told me this key you know theek hai i studied and i know i made two mistakes and i it's not that a child who got 18 can't get 20 it's just that he made two mistakes and he says but yet my 18 is never appreciated him i'm always compared to a my peers i'm always compared to and god forbid if he's in a tuition class you want to know what all the other children got you know who's in a tuition class and then you say and then either you'll pull him up or pull up the tuition sir you know one of the two so those things you know do happen and uh, i remember i mean uh, i'm lucky and i'm blessed that uh, you know i have a kid who studies and he does fairly well he's amongst uh, the top 5 students in his class and i remember talking to him about this and he came and told me that in, in a particular exam i know there was another kid that did better than him and he was you know in that whole competitive frame he came and told me that you know uh, i've also studied so much and how come i didn't do well and this and that so i told him do you ever watch tennis and he said yes i do so i told him i said suppose today there's a match between federer and nadal who's going to win So he says it's very difficult to predict. Both are good players. Or I said if there's a match between Nadal and Nadal and Djokovic, who's going to win? So he says both are both are good players. We cannot predict. So I said exactly. So you all have five or six or seven good students in the class, and any on any given day, any one of you could you know win a tournament or do well. So I said it's something like that. So one exam you could do well, the other exam he could do well. It's not that the others are not good students. your marks are near each other i said but it can happen there's you know that you can lose a mark here and there these things do happen so it's very important that we tell children and we learn to tell children to accept that they can be people who are better than them we have to make children also realize that they can be people who are competitive but in a healthy way and it's very important that uh, you know if you have your child's friends who are good academically let them meet let them study let them discuss let it not be that oh i you shouldn't share with him what you're doing you shouldn't share your notes with him you shouldn't do this let it be something which is very very healthy and i said 
And I think that's that's very important because just like we have sportsmanship in sport, we must also have academic sportsmanship here. You know, we have to accept that these things can happen. I have seen teachers who, I mean, I've seen parents, you know, who vehemently, you know, attack teachers and openly, you know, you give him less, you did that. It's okay. These things don't matter. I mean, if you look at our lives, we've all failed in some exam okay, at some point of time. Maybe an eighth standard trigonometry test, maybe something. Today, no one asks, why did you fail in that exam? We had some geography paper we didn't do well in. No one asks us today, you know, why you didn't do well or whatever. So it's it's fine in life in the long run. I mean, these things don't matter. And it's good. It's good to be perfect. But at the same time, there will always be times when, you know, you have imperfections. And I always say, we have to love those imperfections. Some, you know, there's a saying that I tell all parents, you know, who come to me and who are, who say, and a common statement that parents often make when they come to me is, my child is not a bad child, doctor. He's a good child. So I said, every parent obviously feels that their child is a good child. And say, but, you know, this is wrong and that is wrong and that is wrong and that is wrong. So I said, you've already listed five, six things which are wrong. And then you're saying he's a good child. She says, no, he doesn't have any bad habits. He doesn't have any bad, you know, but but these are the few things. And I, and parents, and often, you know, they'll come and they'll tell me in Hindi, who kab mature hoga? You know, it's a very common statement that parents make. And I said, Ki, you know, you've been after him, you know, in the eighth till the seventh and suddenly you expect him to mature, you know, in eighth, ninth and tenth, which is what I don't understand. Be with him throughout. What's the harm? And he'll mature on his own. And I tell parents, remember one thing, one saying, which I read, I remember 2007 or eight, I read it somewhere and it stuck with me. And I say, in the end, like nature, everything rearranges itself. So I said, you know, whatever you do, things will fall in place. You you may try to push it to make it happen earlier. It won't happen. You know, things will fall in place. So this is one aspect. Second, don't ever compare two children in the family. You know, it invariably happens. You know, one cousin is better, younger brother is better, older sister is better. And, you know, there's a lot of comparison that happens. And I give this example from my own school. We had two children who are you know, who were twins in my class. And this I'm talking about the 90s when I was, 80s and 90s when I was in school, early 90s. And of course, and you know, one of them was very good academically. He would come in the top five of the class. And one of them was not interested in academics, though they were identical twins, you know. And um, so the other boy, he would not write in the class, you know, and invariably the teacher would tell him why you're not writing. And he would say, you know, the other boy would be uh, very sincere and would be writing. So the teachers also wouldn't bother so much because they knew his work would get completed. But the boy who came first, he would do well because he would write everything twice. You know, one for himself and one for, once for his brother, you know, at home. And um, uh, his drawing book, the brother would draw twice. He would draw once for him and draw once for... Uh, the other one also, because that fellow didn't like to draw. And he would draw two different drawings so that a drawing teacher doesn't feel it's the same drawing. So invariably, you know, so they would spend their time that way. And I always relish, cherish, admire their mom. She was a very beautiful Punjabi lady. She's, I still meet her. She's in her 80s. Uh, and, you know, she would come on the open day and, you know, the teachers would invariably say, Aapka ek beta dekho, itne achhe marks laya hai, aur aapka dusra beta dekho, so koi interest nahi hai padai mein. And you know, and the mother would kiss both of them on the head and said, dono mere bachche, nahi padte, to nahi padne do, chalega. You know, and you know, we would often tell our mother, see how nice she is, you know, she said, nahi padte, to nahi padne do. But the thing was that, you know, uh, and she would say, kuch na kuch to kar lega life mein. And you know, and we would wonder at that time, he's not studying, how is he going to ever manage in life? But the thing was, he did manage over the years. Well, uh, one of them, of course, became a plastic surgeon and he's now based in the US. That's the boy who studied well. And the other boy became a chef because he was not so much into academics, but creativity was definitely there. So he's a pastry chef. And the thing is that um, the boy who was a plastic surgeon, he married a violinist. 
and the boy who you know was a pastry chef has married a dentist so the thing is you know in the end it finally all settles it doesn't matter what you achieve academically now the thing is wh- why i mentioned that is you will always have children who are not so i won't say bad in academics but not so good either and you know you may feel oh whatever he does he only gets that much and you know he's never able to go above that well that's fine i mean he will do something in life it's not that he won't and i worked in schools i met different children what hurts me the most is yes if you have a child that's intelligent fine push him it's absolutely fine but when you have a child that you know the capacity is to probably get between 70 and 85 percent he's not the type, type of child who can get 95 and 99 and then you push the person to you know try and exceed what the intellectual capacity is it's going to hurt the child you know somewhere or the other i mean i know parents who put children in some kind of a school that prepares you for iit from the ninth standard i don't know you know i mean it's sad that schools like this exist and you know the ninth and tenth they are there 11 they are there 12 they are there i mean imagine four years of grinding they are going to burn out by the time they finish iit it's not going to be you know a nice thing at all so you know this is what when we look at perfection so this is the first aspect the second aspect is that you know never boast about your achievements to your children i always say and i get parents who come and tell me you know i've had the father says i have studied from you know the university of boston big deal if you have studied you studied you know your child doesn't have to necessarily go to boston he can study from orissa also it doesn't matter at all i mean you know so you don't come and boast your achievements and say you know i was a gold medalist in my mba so what if you were you were i mean it doesn't mean that he also has to be a gold medalist no there's nothing like that and i've had people who told me you know we've all studied abroad and you know he says he has no interest in going abroad he wants to go to jaihin college i said let him go there's no problem i mean it's his choice let him lead his life the way he wants why should he go abroad he says i don't want to go abroad you know i am very happy here and so these kind of things i mean and you know you particularly i mean it happens even amongst doctors i have had doctor parents who come to me and tell me that and they ask me that you know what if your son doesn't want to take up medicine because i'm a second generation doctor i had both my parents who were doctors so i said but in today's era if he doesn't want to take up medicine i would rather have him happy i would tell him do what you want and as a parent i tell people that you know i have probably done enough for myself in my life for my child to do anything he wants but not for my child to do nothing so i said it's very important that you know my child should do what he wants and enjoy himself it's very important so someone told me if like in 3 years your son comes and says you know i want to take up photography what will you say i said definitely i'll make him the best photographer possible you know i'll put him in the best school get him the best camera do all that i can and you know i'll tell him to excel in that area because that's his in- area of interest i said it will not hurt me that he's not a doctor so i said and this and i said maybe once he becomes a good photographer i'll make a mental health coffee book you know with his help so i said we can work together even then it doesn't mean that you know it has to be that way so i said there's no harm and i get parents doctor parents who come to me engineer parents who come to me and they'll tell me so somehow counsel my child to take up medicine i said that's not my job my job is to counsel him you know if he has a problem so he says no he's saying he wants to do commerce and he wants to do something else and you know we have this whole hospital who's going to manage the infrastructure i said sell it off you know the important thing is you you your children have to do what they must want to do you can't push them to do things you want them to do because uh, you know those are your sort of unfulfilled ambitions uh, i remember many time uh, i get children who come to me you know particularly in the 10th standard and they'll tell me that sir why is it that every time every morning i'm reminded i'm in the 10th standard you know he says my my uncle my dad 10th me agya 10th me agya he says yeah i was in 8th i went to 9th now i'm in 10th for me it's just another year but you know the way no one told me in 8th ki 8th me agya but now when i'm in the 10th everyone in the building also when i come kya 10th chal raha hai kaisa chal raha hai he said everyone is so bothered about my 10th for whatever reason i don't know and they said ki it's like you know that टेप रिकॉर्डर अभी आठ महीना बचा है अभी सात महीना बचा है तो हाँ हर साल इतना महीना एक एक महीना जा रहा है 
for me that march exam is like my ninth final i'm giving my 10th final i have no pressure about it you know he says i feel my mom and dad are also appearing for 10th you know the way they are getting pressurized about it so i said ha huh, so i said so I, i said no that sadly i said that that is the way you know that is there but and you will be reminded again and again because i said your parents do have those anxieties when you're in the 10th and 12th and that you have to do this so that's fine i said no no but the thing is you know they they'll take every much important i said there are not in one way but i said you don't have to take the pressure you relax do what you want manage you'll do well and of course i mean children do well i mean there are a lot of parents who come to me and say uh, you know children are not uh, studying and i say they all study finally i mean i've had children i know who have practically not done well in the terminals not done well in the prelims somehow i don't know by miracle they've done very well in the 10th how i don't know but they've done well so i said children finally do study another very important thing is you know learn to let your child accept no in their lives learn to let them face rejection you know learn to let them face negativity it's a part of life life cannot be perfect it's very important that we tell children that you know you're going to face rejections girlfriend boyfriend will reject you you lose a job you will have a friend that cheats you i mean we've all been through these experiences in life you will have someone who's rude to you let them face these rejections you know you don't have to go and stand up for them every time let them fall you're there to support them but let them learn to face these emotional setbacks and while they face these emotional setbacks we have to of course be there to be with them but we cannot think that we have a magic wand that you know we will come and make everything okay for them you don't have to tell them no no don't worry dad is there i'll manage everything don't worry mom is there i'll manage everything. no you can't you have to let them manage it you know it's it's not at all that kind of a thing like i always tell parents that the the tendency in most of us as parents is the moment our child comes to us with a problem we want to offer them a solution and say okay look here the problem is solved no let's not do that let us reach in a manner wherein we tell them that you know let's let's try and see what is workable so very often you know let's not look at solving the problem you know? so the child comes and says this is happening in the school this that don't worry i will talk to the principal no never give him that kind of an answer you know tell him you go and talk to the principal you know and this is what you will tell the principal and this is what you will tell for because these things are very important you know life can't be perfect and we can't make it perfect so whenever my kid comes to me and says that you know daddy i want to talk to you and i always ask him i said what do you want you know have you come here just to sort of rant and go away or have you come here that you want an opinion or do you want me to give you four options like abc and you want to choose or you know do you actually want me to step in and do something for you and invariably he'll come and say no i need i need your help and i need you to decide for me fine that's when i step in and i tell him what to do there are times he says i just want you to hear me out and i'll be fine i'll manage it even when he has a fight with his friends don't interfere you know should i call up that person's mother should i call up that person's father you know don't don't let them manage their fights i mean i always say fine if you of course if your son is being bullied hit treated badly yes you will intervene that's your job to intervene you are going to protect him but if there are minor fights i mean you don't have to try and make things work let them fight let them let him not talk to a friend for two days let him be upset for two days let him not eat food properly for two days no, don't worry it's fine it's absolutely fine but they have to learn to face you know those emotions and they will sort of build on it well and there are many times when this happens and i always ask my own son and i tell other parents also ask him if you need anything i'm here if you want to talk to me i'm here otherwise you manage it on your own and they will very often say no no i have it under control i'll manage it there's no problem so it's only when they feel that it's going beyond their hands they'll come to you they're bound to come to you always tell your children that life is not perfect and whenever you're in a mess whenever you make a mistake please come to me i always tell parents tell children that you can do things which are wrong and when you do things which are wrong please come to me because i will i may be upset that you've done something wrong it's normal for me to be upset but i will at least support you and help you to make it right which is also very important so that's something which i also tell parents another very important thing is that uh, mothers and fathers have to be on the same page when it comes to you know managing the child it can't happen that the father thinks differently the mother thinks differently in fact when the child goes to school i mean you've been given 6 hours 8 hours a day 
where you can talk to each other and decide how you're going to manage a particular problem and reach a consensus so that in front of the child, you don't look divided. It's very, very important. And it shouldn't, because children know very well what to ask mommy and what to ask daddy, you know, so they'll go and they'll say that, you know, I spoke to daddy. He said, I can go on the picnic. Mommy, I'm going in. And you end up fighting with your husband and the child goes on the picnic. Sometimes, or he'll come and say, you know, I, mama has told me I can go out with my friends on Saturday. He'll come and tell the father. Right. So, so it's like he's not taking your permission. He's informing you that, you know, you're told. So these things also happen. So children are very aware, you know, they know who to ask what and who to ask and who to say what to, you know, that kind of a thing. Also, I mean, you all are also all in an era where, you know, children are growing. So there's going to be imperfections in relationships also. They will have crushes. They will have infatuations. They will like, you know, people don't get bothered. You know, they come and tell you that there's a particular boy in my class who I like, or there's a particular girl in my class who I like. Don't tell them, oh, this is the time to study and, you know, don't fall in love. It's going to happen anyway. You know, you can't do anything about it. This is natural. I always say we have to help children deal with love. We have to help children handle crushes. We have to help children manage breakups rather than tell them love is a bad thing. We don't tell them it's a bad thing. We tell them it's a very normal emotion and we teach them to handle it. So that's something which also they have to understand. Also, don't be insistent on the fact, you know, your, oh, my you know, son has to look perfect. His hair has to be perfect. His looks have to be perfect. His, you know, figure has to be perfect, even with girls for that matter. It's okay to be a little imperfect. It's absolutely fine. No one is absolutely perfect. You know, don't don't push them to the brink that they keep looking at themselves in the mirror, that they keep looking at themselves and they want to have that perfect face. And, you know, so I remember I met a, a girl who, you know, covered her mirror with a bedsheet because she got a pimple and she didn't want to see herself, you know, in the mirror. And I said, you know, you can't be that way. I said, go and look at yourself in the mirror. It's absolutely fine. You're going to get far more pimples in your life now over time. It's absolutely normal. Yes, we'll treat the pimples. You know, that is more easier to do than to sort of, you know, tell yourself, oh, my face is spoiled or this and that. And for that matter. So, I mean, I get boys who come and tell me, you know, I'm why am I not muscular? And uh, there are people in my class who are more muscular. And I always tell them, you've got to respect and love your body the way it is. You know, everyone's body is perfect for them. You know, it's not about, you know, being thin or fat or dark or, you know, and there's no need to body shame yourself. You know, when no one is shaming you, you know, you are, you're creating this whole image. You know, another thing which I think you also have to tell your child is, and though it's a little early in the day, they're young, I still tell children, you know, have no regrets in life. You know, you make mistakes, you learn. And you move ahead. It's very, very important. You forgive yourself and move on. It's very, very important. You can't have regrets. Because if you think that, you know, I should be this or I should be that and I could be this or I could be that. And that's a lie. You are what you are, you know, today. That's it. Don't don't imagine yourself to be something who you aren't. Because that's a lie. So you accept yourself. Yes. And I said, yes, I tell them always, yes, we've all done bad things. We've all done good things. So we forgive ourselves and move on. And that's the best thing you can do. Because otherwise, you're going to be stuck there. That, you know, with that regret. Yes, you can feel bad about it. You can cry about it. You can emote about it. But you move on. Still, you, you don't get stuck there and whatever. Like I always remember, I mean, today is an era where Children are so much aware, whether it is sexuality, whether it is pornography, whether it is uh, LGBTQ+. They are so much aware about so many things. And I remember I saw a child who came to me. She's in the ninth standard and she was being troubled by a few peers in her school. And she said that I am upset because they're calling me lesbian. And I said, 3% of the world is lesbian. Why are you upset about it? I said, it's your own homophobia that's making you upset. I said, by them calling you lesbian, you're not becoming lesbian. I said, tomorrow, if you call someone gay, 3% of the world is gay. Doesn't mean that, you know, you uh, are abnormal. It's regarded as being normal. So I said, so don't worry. I said, tomorrow, if they call you dark, you can't get upset. Tomorrow, if they call you, you know, thin, you can't get upset. These things are going to be there. I mean, I said, the moment you learn to accept yourself the way you are, you know, that's something which is very important. I said, what does one do if, let's say, he's a weightlifting champion? He's on the heavier side. I said, what are they going to do? Call him fat? Fine. 
it's okay now if they feel he's everyone is fat or thin compared to someone so i said we can't you know let these things worry us and you know bother us and go on and i said you got to look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself you know you're very good i mean uh, so that's there also also what's very important is uh, we also have to tell children i mean this is very very important because uh, you will get a lot of children post 12 13 14 who will come to you and they talk about all the imperfections with regard to their sexual well being i get children in a school who come to me at 13 14 15 and say sir i think i'm lesbian sir i think i'm bisexual sir i think i'm gay and i'll very often tell them see you're in a phase where you're developing you know there's nothing fixed right now you know it's okay it's there's nothing normal about it there's nothing abnormal about it let's let things go it's all fine you're developing you are in a stage where you may feel today i'm gay tomorrow you'll feel i'm heterosexual tomorrow you'll feel something else it's okay let's observe how you are till you're 18 19 and then we'll take a call do not be in a hurry to label yourself as you know being this or being that or anything you have a free right to express the emotions you feel and so these things you know will will happen we will have people who you know think this way so it's important as parents that you know we just be open about this few other imperfections and perfectionism which is very important is you go and see your kid sometimes you know stand and talk to children you don't like and you may say no i don't like him mixing with that group don't put that into his head i always say let him mix with everyone we mold our child we can't change the world you know we mold our child we can't prevent him from mixing with the wrong people he is bound to say hello hi to everyone he has to learn to accept everyone in this world we mold him that's very very important i mean i had a parent i know who came and she was in the 10th standard the kid she saw the kid probably i think the friends offered him a puff of a cigarette and she saw him taking one puff of the cigarette she got out of her car slapped him on the road now that's no way to deal with that situation i said you call him home talk to him tell him i saw this ask for an explanation and then we talked to him and tell him that experimental use is also wrong and we we talked to him about it i mean what if you're walking on the road and you you know see your daughter or you see your son holding a guy's hand or a girl's hand and walking on the road what are you going to do you're going to get out of your car and shout and create a scene there no not at all i mean you'll have to accept that you know these things happen you know today i mean for children between the age of 12 and 16 holding hands is normal at our age if you ever held hands i mean we would have been thrown out of the house but you know holding hands is absolutely normal hugging is normal even for that matter i mean uh, you know sitting close to each other all that is absolutely normal no one you know they don't look at those boundaries anymore like you know even a girl and boy sitting on the same bench is normal i mean in our time the girls would be put in one side boys would be put in one side i mean that was a different era today's era is you know is very very different so that kind of a thing another thing about perfectionism your child is going to fall in love please accept it you know it's going to happen it's very normal it's going to happen it doesn't matter how she looks how she is how he is how he looks she he or she is going to fall in love i had a parent who came to me and told me my daughter goes to i am not put her in a coed school so that you know she doesn't fall in love and i put her in uh, a convent school where the sisters are very strict and all this love and infatuation won't happen so i said god is very kind for every convent girl school there's always a boy school nearby and they both leave at the same time so what doesn't happen inside the school will happen outside the school so i said and in the tuition class you will have boys in the other coaching classes you will have boys so there's going to be you know some exchange of i said uh, i blinks and notes and numbers and other things and i said these things will happen you know and you can't really do anything about it so you have to accept that these things happen and it's absolutely fine so love today is not a condemned emotion it's a very emotion that we have to accept that is going to happen last thing before we open the session for questions which is very important three things one is your child's mental health is far more important than their grades always remember that you know if you have a child who says that i'm not able to give this exam don't say are it's only two days somehow pull it through and his mental health or her mental health deteriorate further which is i think very very important it's okay if they miss a terminal what happens it's okay if they miss a unit test what happens it's absolutely fine i mean his health is you know far far more important or her health is important so that's there also please have a uh, 
candid conversations with your children about life. Tell them about the mistakes you made. Tell them about what you learned. They love to hear incidences, you know, of your life. So tell them about small things that you went through at school. Tell them about small things that you went through in college. How you learned. Even for that matter, I mean, talk to them about a crash you had. It's okay, fine. Now, I mean, you know, it's absolutely fine. Let them know about, you know, these things. It's it's very, very important. They want to know how you met dad, what happened, what was there at that time. Let them know about these things. These are very, very, you know, nice things, which, you know, you should discuss and have a lot of family time. It's very important that keep an hour, hour and a half of the day where, you know, you keep your phone aside. Everyone keeps their phone aside. And you just talk about how your days went, you know, what you did, who you met, you might talk about what you're doing tomorrow. You may talk about the family. You may talk about the servants. You may talk about anything. But talk about everything that, you know, is an integral part um, of your life. It's it's very important that we have these free conversations with, with children. And as children grow, of course, mothers and daughters need to spend a little more time. Fathers need to spend more time with their sons. So these are all normal things, you know, that that have to happen. And it's it's very, very important that these things happen. But in the end, I think what, what matters is that parenting is a journey and it's not a perfect journey. Always remember that. There are no perfect parents. There are no perfect children. There are only a lot of perfect moments along the way. So enjoy those perfect moments, which I think is very important. Thank you so much. And I'll be very happy to answer any questions. Thank you so much. Um, any questions, you can put them down on chat. If you want, if you'd like to ask them yourself, you can just raise your hand so that we're not all speaking at the same time. So anyone, anything, this is your moment. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Um, hi, everyone. Hi, Dr. Avinash. It was wonderful listening to you. I just have a query. So sometimes um, our kids, so we know that what they are doing is not the right thing to do. And probably they are not matured enough to understand at this point of time that they are wrong. But kids tend to be rebellious and they know that or they feel that they are right. I mean, uh, what they are thinking is the right direction. So how how do we actually, um, you know, incorporating everything, like not being very harsh on them, but how do we get them on the right track? How do we show them the right path? Because um, it's always that way. They feel that they are right and we know they are not right. Sometimes there are times where we know that, no, this is completely the wrong thing. So how do we handle such situations? So there are... There are Two, three things here. One is if you feel something is grossly wrong and it's going to hurt someone else and the child, yes, we put our foot down and say no very clearly and upfront and say it's not going to happen. Even if they think you're a bad parent, it's fine. Two, if you feel that uh, you know there are things which could be learning experiences for the child where you tell them no because you know they are wrong, but it's a situation where you could allow them to fall and learn. Yes, please, you know, allow them to fall and learn. It's absolutely fine. Third, there could also be a situation where you know they're going to do something wrong, but they'll also have to face consequences for it. Please let them face it. It's 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 a good thing for them to realize that way. And then they automatically realize that, you know, you were telling me this, mom, and, you know, I didn't listen. So it's something that they will, because... Sometimes, you know, the more you tell them, don't do it, they'll still go out and do it. So I feel unless it's something which is going to sort of violate something legally and it's something which is not proper, it's going to hurt others. Yes, we put our foot down and say, no, it's not going to happen. But otherwise, I think we can make these mistakes into learning experiences where and when possible. All right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. Yeah. It was a nice session. Uh, uh, so I want to know, uh, well, how do we deal with some uh, introvert kids? Like uh, my son is, uh, if I talk to him for one hour, maybe he'll just say one word to me. Uh, and maybe the days isn't good 
mood or he is very happy or something really good happened in school then he'll say something to me but otherwise he'll not talk I, he generally doesn't talk so how do we deal with them like uh, how to get them talk so i think i mean if children are introvert you know they may not talk so much and we'll have to accept that fact that they don't talk don't try and change their nature don't try and change their inherent nature we have to let things be as they are it's it's very important that uh, you know we uh, don't try and change our children so it's okay as long as he talks to you when it matters is you know what is very important and a lot of people are introvert and they get into uh, jobs professions careers which help them an introvert is in fact considered an advantage in today's world so don't don't you know worry uh, about that you know at all so i think it's okay it's perfectly fine let them be that way as long as there are no other issues arising you know because of that thank you thank you dr we have a question on chat and it says that if a child is in perfection overdrive uh, you know with their marks and their performance much of which could have been instilled as you know by us as parents and and the family environment initially now if we ask them to sort of take it easy how can the process be reversed or slowed down so that they believe that not being perfect a, a perfectionist is also normal they don't want to really hear plain talk so what can we do so i think uh, you know you have to tell them that um, we change our world view from time to time you know initially we thought that this was right now we feel this is wrong so fine i mean you want to pursue this pursue this but it's not something that we are asking you to pursue do it because you want to pursue it but at the same time yes understand that you may not always be successful you can not always come first you're not going to always do well there will be times when you don't do well it's absolutely fine and tell tell them that yes while marks matter it's also important that your life matters so that's also something which is uh, you know vital so we slowly over a period of time try and you know turn them around we do we can't do it overnight we'll have to do it gradually you know over time like i mean i remember a few days back my son told me you know i'm going to fail in uh, my chemistry exam so i said ha fail ho jao i said ek bar to report card pe red mark mile kabhi to dekhe i said kuch nahi mil raha hai She says, "Oh, how can you talk like that? No, no, I won't fail. I'll." So I said, "Ah, yeah, because I know you won't fail." I said, "You're just saying I fail. It's not gonna." I said, "If you fail, also it's okay." It's, I mean, I said, "I don't leave you for nothing." I said, "It's absolutely fine." I mean, whatever you do, I mean, I said, "I'll try and help you out." So if you're not prepared, you're not prepared. It's okay. It can happen. You're not prepared for an exam. It's absolutely okay. another question for you doctor should we allow kids to choose their own careers they are less experienced and often influenced by their surroundings is it okay so we can ask children to choose their own career but we also have to it has to be what i call a guided choice but it can't be an imposed choice you know it's very very important like you know i remember a kid i met and he wanted to go to study abroad and he wanted to go and study in a little lesser known university and the parents were like you know he's getting into a better university and yet he wants a lesser known university and the kid was very very clear that you know i don't want to have that pressure that i am in this university i want to be cheesed out and eased out that you know i am in a little, little less pressure kind of situation i don't want to be in this it's like doing engineering from an iit versus doing engineering from any other smaller college i want to be happier i don't want to be under pressure that i'm in harvard or i'm here and i'm there i rather be in a smaller university and he did very well i mean academically in that university because the pressure was less and he said that uh, i don't think job wise or otherwise in the long run it will matter and he was absolutely right in fact his grades were much better because he topped his university it was a less competitive university he did well and i mean career wise he did well so i think sometimes children know what they want in some cases though yes it's always a guided choice yes ma'am you've raised your hand go ahead and ask thank you so much ma'am uh, thank you sir it was really a very nice session it's just one confusion that i always have it's like uh, nowadays i feel we give 
so much importance to kids as in isn't it fine to scold them sometimes isn't it fine that they get upset and then we give them time just to be themselves and think over it because what happens is there are few mistakes that keep on repeating maybe for a month or two months and we don't say anything we say okay it's fine it's fine but then if they just keep on doing it there would be a point wherein we'll just put our leg down our hand down and we'll say okay that's it and this is wrong and then you need to work on it they realize that it's their mistakes and they realize they are wrong at that point but even i understand that even they are helpless it's their age that they can't do anything for it but isn't it fine to scold them and then be let them be upset for some time mom why no, no, so definitely i mean see see there are there are you know i always say ways and means of doing that so one is you know you first tell them properly nicely in a good way i mean that kind of thing and you and i always say that you know you remind them this is probably the fifth time you know i'm telling you this so this is the sixth time I'm telling you that and of course you know with each time your seriousness and your tone changes a bit you know it's that way and then finally yes i mean they they have to sort of uh, you know realize that you know you do mean business at times and you you're not you know things so so there are times yes i know i mean i remember i mean uh, uh, we 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 have to tell people so i mean it could be told you know in in different ways so uh, like i i mean i was always i was talking to a parent and i said that sometimes when i'm not happy it's something my son does i send him a youtube clip that explains my position you know so i send him once a youtube clip that i'm not happy you know get your house in order or otherwise i'll have to do it for you you know so then he immediately you know uh, said you are upset with me i said i have already conveyed what i wanted to convey in that youtube clip you have 3 days to get your house in order or i'll do it for you so then in 3 days he got everything on track you know because he realized that If I sit on his head, then I'll sit on his head. So he got everything done, and I said I'll take leave for three days, and you know, get your house in order if I need to. So he said, no, 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 I will do it, and he got it done. I mean, so children do go a little astray. Thoda, you know, distractions are there. These things, you know, do happen. So you you can do that, and you you know, there are ways and means of you know, ten children. You know, you need not always shout and scream. You know, I always tell my child in our house, no one screams and shouts. you know you have a problem you sit down you tell me you can feel angry you can feel upset you can cry i mean those are normal emotions i can tell you i'm boiling and upset because of this but it doesn't mean that you know i will bang a fist in a wall or i'll break something or i'll shout at you or i'll abuse you no it won't happen that way you know never never we never tell our children that you know uh, you're the worst child we never tell our children you should have never been born i mean those are things even in our anger phase we don't sort of convey to children ever you know it's it's something though there'll be children who will tell you you know i wish you weren't my dad i wish you weren't my mom you know these things will happen that's that's the day you feel proud that you know you've been a good parent i mean it's absolutely fine no child who has never been hated by his parent i mean never been you know no parent who's never been hated by the child has been a good parent you you will be hated you know at some point of time you know they'll say i hate you it's fine it's absolutely fine that day you smile you know go and treat yourself to good food outside tell yourself ha you know we're successful today so that's that's absolutely fine so we we there are ways and means you know of scolding them telling them whatever and tell them tell them look at it from you know, my position let's say if you know you were a dad what would be your thoughts and they'll say no i would not bothered i'll say no that's wrong you being you you know you're not you're not thinking like a parent you're thinking more like a child so so that kind of thing and another thing you know i always tell parents is that um scolding i mean again there are there are three things here one what you can't allow you can't allow you know so it's very clear that no it's not happening you know what you can allow and bargain and reach midway you reach midway you know so he will say 11 baje raat ko ghar aana you will say nahi 9 baje aana hai you will say first you'll start with 8 pm you know so that you know by he'll come by 9:30 so you know that kind of a thing so you reach midway and then finally i mean yes uh, there are some things which we allow and say okay theek hai you know some mistakes are pardonable and you know they're fine and that kind of a thing so so those things are there so that's the way we parent ha so yesterday what happened i told her that i don't like to be upset about it it's being long now you are doing the same thing 
so let's sit and decide what we can do man it's something you do something i do and then we'll come to a midpoint so she said don't apply those psychological things on me and i understand i'm making this mistakes and i'm working on it so i said okay fine so so uh, so tell her tell her we we are giving you a month to observe okay you work on it you know because we say ki we are right now only applying psychological tactics if in a month things don't work up then we'll have to look at military tactics you know tell her that way so we have no option you know that so you know in a very subtle way warn her see you have 30 days it's a long time you know and we're watching you it's as simple as that so that itself will raise antenna then you know help Doctor, the next question: When a when a child sometimes talks in low tones or speaks poorly about their own physicality, simply counting on other skills or other, um, you know, good points about them doesn't seem to change them or make them feel better about themselves. And although we know it's the passing phase, how can we try sort of instill some positive thinking in them? No. So you need to think that the child's thoughts on this is it is it. very serious or are these just passing thoughts they passing thoughts we don't worry about them but if we feel it's very deeply ingrained then i think they would need help from a counselor you know you would sometimes need a counselor to talk to them someone who's trained they may not need a psychiatrist but you can talk to a counselor and help them you know get help thank you the next question is that we often find our children being selective listeners uh, they don't seem to listen most of the time Are there any tips on communicating with them more effectively? Sometimes I've also seen my kids, in particular, have lost all sense of time, and they are habitual time abusers. They will wait until the last minute before they sort of swing into action. What can we do there? Okay, so the first part: children are always selective listeners. Okay, they listen to what they like, and you know they are, uh, you know, it's that way. so even even i mean i think husbands and wives selectively listen to each other so it's absolutely fine you know it's uh, uh, so i think what's very important is you convey exactly what you want to convey you know there i know parents who will you know talk 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 and say do you understand what i'm saying are you just convey in one sentence you know what you want to convey you know that that's something and and you'll have children you know who see so many of these series and they see so many of these things on netflix so you know when you shout and you will convey and you say do you hear me they'll say yeah loud and clear you know very often and you know that kind of a thing and they'll very often you know say something and then you'll say you're being sarcastic you're being this you'll again get into another argument so they they love to lead you into an argument you know so don't don't take that bait you know they they love to see you lose your cool don't don't you know and then they'll wait for you to make that one statement you know which they'll say that you know now i'm very hurt because you made that statement and they'll turn it on you and make you feel guilty about everything you know that happened so don't don't you know fall for that bait so that's important secondly i think um, uh, uh, the second part what was the second part of the question there was yeah time about time yeah, procrastinating okay, yeah. so so you know children always i mean are you know they they are always they always abuse time it's always that way i think over time they realize and ch- today's children are all you know last minute people i mean if we had a project to make when we were in school you know we would you know have everything ready and you know oh, do it and whatever you know we monday ko submit karna hai to sunday raat ko chart paper dhundenge it's very normal thing which happens you know so so you have to have chart paper and colors and all kept in your stock because you never know what they might suddenly ask for you know card paper white paper red paper we keep all that in the house ki ha suddenly laga so it is there just like you keep ration you have to keep all that and we say ki nahi matlab theek hai so you know if you need it if you need it you need it and uh, you give it and then they'll you know work till 2 o'clock though they know they have to get up at 6 o'clock and they'll somehow finish it you know so it doesn't and then they, on the way they'll tell you i have not done chemistry homework my recess me kar lunga theek hai let them manage it you know and finish it it it's absolutely fine so uh, i think uh, they over time they will manage their generation works that way the next question is also on the value of time how to deal with uh, time allocation like half an hour of tv time so how do you try and get them to respect those boundaries of time they will always negotiate for an extra 5 minutes and then they will beg and make innocent puppy faces and sort of 
try and work their cuteness with you no no so the thing is that uh, i mean what what i normally tell people is that uh, there are two ways i mean one is that um, you're very particular that there's a fixed tv time you know for everyone in the house it's not only uh, the child it's everybody and we adhere to that so it shouldn't happen that you know the child is told no tv time and we're seeing tv the whole time no it shouldn't happen that way and then you know you'll argue mai to news dekh raha hu mai to ye dekh raha hu are but that doesn't mean anything so either you know you also adhere to that similarly when it comes to mobile usage you cannot tell the child no boy mobile for you and then you know you are playing a game on your mobile all day no that can't happen so you need to probably you know have those rules in place they will always say you know thoda aur thoda aur so that is okay i mean you know so assume when you say half an hour it's going to be one hour but so you know so you cut your you know cloth accordingly and then uh, decide so that kind of a thing i mean always works Vishal, yes, uh, yes, uh, yes. my question is now I feel that there is a big influence of their own peers, you know, from school. True. So they all think alike. They all similar uh, hobbies they have, which uh, you must have done a, a clinical studies. So which was not earlier. So what is the positive and negative of that? I think there is no positive or negative. It's the hobby. If the hobby is good, we allow it. You know, today I think uh, their hobbies are what anime, Korean bands. and you know all these things so i mean you know which was never there you know at our time on netflix pe bhi japanese korean hi dikh rahe which you know is something we never see so you know the, so i think korean drama and turkish you know, the girls are more into turkish serials which are those romantic serials and all and you know so it's it's there so i think as long as it's nothing negative i don't really bother about it but if you know the hobbies are negative where they are probably making memes on someone and insulting someone that's something i would not allow but if you know i tell i always say that please you know do something which is positive it's it's very important as long as there's a not, not a lot of time spent with adult content and all those kind of things you know i wouldn't worry you know so much about it so and peer influence always i always tell Uh, children that your friends have to help you grow if your friends put you down they're not your friends you know you have to then look at a new group so that's something which is very important and no one can tell you that if you don't do this you don't belong to our group if no one can they have to accept you how you are you know it's it's absolutely fine i mean i tell i mean my own son here they have a group of seven or eight people and i tell them it's absolutely fine if one of you doesn't want to go out on that given day you know or i said if you all go out say and you all of you want to go and have a franky and one of you wants to go and have noodles you go yourself and get your noodles it's absolutely fine you don't have to jabar as see stuff of franky because everyone is having a thing you know you can be different i mean you can and they have to respect your opinion and they have to respect that okay theek hai i don't want coffee i'm going to have masala chai six coffees and one masala chai it's absolutely fine i mean it's your choice so i tell them your peers have to respect that i mean you know or you say today i'm not in a mood i want to be at home snuggle up and only probably be on my ipad fine theek hai nahi kya nahi aa raha hai you know you're not in a group aise thodi hota hai they to respect that theek hai aaj man nahi hai you been out too much this week you don't want to go out today it's absolutely fine so and i say that that is for all of you you all respect each other's you know opinions about it so that's fine Doctor, we have a couple more questions, no, but no, I realize no. it's past nine. Can we please? No problem. We'll take them. them. We'll take them. We'll take them. No problem. Thank yeah. you. There's one, and I think that's really interesting. With so much of media exposure, peer exposure, and exposure in every sense, what's the right age to really educate children about the subject of sex as a parent? Well, I think uh, we normally in schools, you know, start this. at a primary level with good touch and bad touch you know we started from there and we increase it every year i think children by 12 13 14 up aware of a lot of things so today when i do sex education sessions i don't normally have a presentation because children know far more than what the presentation has so i normally have more of a q and a where i tell them it's an open q and a about sexuality gender life and you ask me whatever you want and i'll be more than happy you know to answer them i've done a session a month back for a very prominent school and we've had eight standard children who asked me you know ki 
what is better using a condom or an oc pill you know so that's they're so aware about this and they'll say ki you know which is the best and safest oc pill available and i had to tell them i'm not a gynac you know i can't answer you because i obviously didn't want them to you know get the name and go and probably buy it to do anything that way so so these things are there there are people who you know and what i was very very pleased about was girls got up openly and spoke about menstrual pain and menstrual cramps and the boys didn't laugh at all and i was you know very very happy about it and i told the boys that you know take a bow you've been so sensitive to the fact that you know the girls in your class have got up and spoken about this and you'll not wince or laugh or smile and you know and boys asked us questions about menstruation girls asked us questions about male sexuality and neither group laughed and i said i'm very very happy that you know you'll so you'll take this topic seriously which i think i was proud of i mean oh you know they were they were i mean a very good batch of course and they they asked all sorts of questions i mean i even had you know someone asked me um ha some i mean people have even asked me about the fact that um uh, can someone who's gay up for surrogacy at an eighth standard level i mean that means you know they are so aware <clears throat> they know what surrogacy is at eighth standard level and you know never knew at standard level ki you know whether we attain puberty or not but you know the thing is they were already aware at that point of time i mean that's the way today's world is i mean they are they are i mean so so you you have to go with the times and i think we answer any question that comes to uh, us directly i think it changes you know with the trends and uh, so we have people who come and you know ask so all all sorts of questions so they are they are so aware yeah, so i think uh, so there's no right age you know when when the student is ready the teacher arrives i think you know it's that way one more question from mom yeah. ma'am yeah yeah thank you uh, doctor one more uh, question so i would want to understand how much importance is uh, too much like uh, nowadays all our lives revolve around our kids so for everything what's going to be cooked at home where are we going for a vacation everything we are going to the kids and asking but i think that has its flip side as well where they feel that the whole world revolves just around them and they are the most important uh, people around so how much importance uh, should be associated to a kid's uh, opinion or uh, decision in the overall family matters of course their matters no, we, are we, we have to give them importance it's not that but at the same time they have to also realize that you know they'll have to accept adapt and uh, you know be um, adjusting to what is acceptable to the family it can't happen that always what they want is followed right right okay okay thank you doctor a mother says that i try to teach my son that it's not about being the best in everything that you do but more about the effort that you put in and practice is progress at the end of the day you must be satisfied on the other hand there are others and relatives who are saying things like you have to be the best um you know nobody remembers the second person who landed on the moon so how do you help them really process such tangential views so i normally tell my kid that yes the effort matters it's not the result and as long as you're happy that you put in your best effort that's more important the same thing i think uh, goes i mean see there are there are two ways of looking at it you know it's like you know there is this whole thing that everyone remembers the person who's a 100 meter champion no one remembers a marathon winner it's okay both are winners you know at the end of the day some people go and see the marathon some go and see the 100 meters it's it's their choice so i think what is what is very important is that we tell children that uh, what we say is important there are going to be a lot of people who tell you different things don't let that bother you you know it's it's it doesn't matter at all what we tell you matters and we love you no matter what so let your relative say anything i don't think that plays a role thank you and we've already overshot by 10 minutes i don't think it's fair to take any more of your time having attended many of uh, dr disuza's talks i must 
say that yet again, what's really the standout is the fact that the, every single talk is so candid and so contemporary. Um, thank you, thank you, Doctor, for being with us, and thank you all. Uh, thank all of you for coming in here today. Uh, on chat, you will see my email ID. This is the last of the talks in the parent series for Mentabulous, but the discussion must continue. So if you can write in to us and let us know what topics you'd like to hear, what you'd like us to talk about, we can take the continuum on and try and schedule more such uh, inspiring and enlightening talks. Um, thank you very, very, very much, Dr. D'Souza, for being thank here you so once much. again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It was nice. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. You, thank you so much. Thank you. Ranjini, ma'am, I have a question for you yes, about yes. the walk tomorrow. Yes. What is it exactly? <laughs> Uh, Ms. Annie, uh, we've not, we, you know, the, the number of responses that we had, the nominations for the walk weren't really in lines with what we were expecting. And logistically, considering what was planned, um, it, it seems like it's a little unfeasible at this point. So the walk at this time has been shelved. Um, a circular has already been sent for children grades 9 to 12 who have been called into school. It's an SUPW Saturday. The schedule has already been shared for them. So parents, it's a well-deserved Saturday off. Okay, thank you. Uh, I would like to know, uh, this is uh, a thing here. Uh, I had missed the earlier two sessions because I was out working. Uh, is it possible for us to get a link, a link to the recorded sessions? The YouTube set the, the sessions are all available on the YouTube live, the barring the first one, uh, which we will put up subsequently by the end of tomorrow, I think. All okay. the sessions are available on the Avalon YouTube channel. You will be able to view them there. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. I uh, really appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank bye, you. Bye, bye. 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 Do, do have these sessions more often. It is uh, they're very informative, and you know, especially in dealing with problems that we face nowadays. Uh, so it is really relevant also. So if you could have it once, uh, and it's nice to months. know you're not alone, right? It's nice to know <laughs> yes. that we're here yeah, in numbers and that we're not alone. Very this true. is the first of our endeavors. Uh, Mentabulous has been the first, but it's definitely not the end. Like I said, the week has come to the end, but the conversation hasn't. We do intend to schedule many, many more such. And I'm very encouraged to see that the online platform has worked for all of us. We do intend to continue to maintain them online. Whoever would like to come into school and have them physically, we can arrange for that as well. So do keep your thoughts, your suggestions, your ideas coming in. If it's working, uh, do let us know. If it's not, do let us know what you'd like to change as well. But we would like to keep this going. Randini, I have one more thing uh, to say. I, I just wanted to request that uh, these sessions are obviously uh, the parents have attended, but sometimes you would want the children also to be a part of uh, some sessions which may be relevant for even them to hear. Because, you yes. know, at this age, hearing from parents is a little boring and hearing from some kind of people whom they can idolize is a little uh, easier to drive things home to them. Um, so, Ms. Anchar, we're having parallel talks with children on topics that we've identified as being most relevant and important to them. If you think that you'd like a session where you have a mom and me or a parent and me together, where you're sitting in the room and being addressed by experts, we will take that under advisement as well. Um, it's very hard to record and maintain your suggestions on chat. You will see my email ID there. Please do write in and we will consider all things, all suggestions that you have. Please sure, that, in sure, that will be very helpful. Thank you. Is also something that you'd like to add in? Yeah, yes. Is this walk rescheduled or it's... Uh... We do want to have the walk. We're only hoping that we're pushing it to a later date. We will keep you informed. If you're interested, please, again, my email ID, do write in and let us know. And, um, and we'll work on it. We will. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Bye.